This past week, I got a uh, email from my brother, and he was answering the question, or at least trying to answer the question, why did the chicken cross the road? Maybe you've got the answer. Why did the chicken cross the road? Got to the other side. Yeah, well, that's one answer. There are other answers that uh, that come forth. For example, Zeus, Dr. Zeus might say, "Why did the chicken cross the road? Why he went? I've not been told." Or there was a North Korean who said, "It was an unprovoked attack, and we need to attack that chicken." with 50 tons of gas. Bill Gates would say, I've just come out with my new uh, email app, and it, app and it, and it says, um, this chicken can not only speak English, but he can speak foreign languages as well, and also lay eggs and balance your checkbook. <laughs> well, that's good. President Trump can, Trump can say, I have decreed that any chicken in America is free to cross any road without penalty. Colonel Sanders would say, I missed one? I missed one? <laughs> well, there are different answers to that. But why did the chicken cross the road? That's been a mystery. And certainly in the scripture of this story, it's a mystery, except we find out that God is talking through a donkey, and through the donkey by doing the things that God wants the donkey to do. It's an interesting thing that the donkey did what God wanted him to do, even when Balaam, the donkey's master, didn't. Scripture has a, a passage in, that I read this morning that talks about this donkey. And that's what I want to pick up. There are three great truths that come out of this story. <clears> the <throat> first truth is that you are not alone. Now, that's a profound truth if you think about it, because there are times when we think, especially when we're desperate, we think that we are alone. There's no one here to help us. And what am I going to do? And how can I get out of this mess? And so we feel very much alone. But the truth of the matter is, you are never, you are never, ever, totally alone. Jesus said it this way, Lo, I will be with you always. Now that's the word of the Lord. Lo, I will be with you always. So when you feel that you're alone, when you feel that you're, you just don't know what to do next, you're just there all by yourself, be aware that you are not ever always by yourself alone. God is always present. That's one truth to be aware of. The second truth is that while we tend to live our lives as though God is our God and will help us and we ask for favors and we hope he gives them to us, the fact is that God works in our life not to fulfill our agenda. God works in our life so he may fulfill his agenda. And that's quite a different thing. There are times when I want something from God and I pray to God and ask God for a favor, ask him for a blessing, and he doesn't do it. And I wonder, why, why didn't he do that? I thought he was my father. But the truth of the matter is, yes, he is my holy heavenly father, but I am his child. And as a child, I need to be aware that it's not always my will that the father wants to wish and, and please. The father has his own agenda. God has his own agenda, and he wants to work it through your life. And so when we ask God for things, sometimes which we shouldn't ask for, he will only please what he thinks is best for us, not what we think is best for us. That's the second truth. The third truth is that God's work in life is not only the story of Jesus dying on the cross for our salvation, God's work in this world of ours, my life, your life, is not destruction, death on a cross, but salvation, the saving of people, that they may live in his eternal life forever. God's will is not for our death, but our deliverance. 
and our life with him forever. Let's look at each of these briefly this morning. Balaam thought that he was alone. And, and I can understand that. There he is uh, on his donkey traveling along the road, and uh, he felt alone. Years ago, Admiral Byrd was out in the uh, South Pole. He was exploring, and he was there for six months. Being six months in the South Pole alone, you would feel alone. And, and Admiral Byrd thought he was alone, but after a while, he, he began to be aware that he was never alone. Being there as the only human being around there, he still became aware that there was someone else there, and that someone else was God. He had the sense, the feeling, the, the strange uh, tingling in his soul that God was there in the presence of Admiral Byrd in South Pole. That's so God is everywhere. And I want you to be aware that no matter where you are, you're never alone. God is always there. Jesus promised it, and he fulfills it. The second great truth is not only that we're never alone, but that uh, God's will is for us to be uh, fulfilling his agenda. The story, the basic story in this scripture is about fulfilling agendas. You have agendas about what you want done in your life today, what problems you want solved, what tasks you want fulfilled. We all have agendas, don't we? Well, God has his own agenda for our life. Think about that for a minute. You have your agenda. God has his agenda for your life. And so he wants you to be considerate that let him have a way in your life, not you have him do your service. Let him help you as you do his service. God's agenda in your life is a very important part of it. There's a family, there was a family some years ago now in Sacramento, California, Jared Westbrook and his wife, Virginia. Uh, they were going on a trip and uh, they were the African-Americans, the first African-Americans in that community. But they had to go on a trip, so they went. And while they were gone, some people in that neighborhood didn't like the black people in that neighborhood, lowered the property value, whatever they said. And so some people got against them. They got some stuff, and they t took paint and other things and soiled the outside of the house, making it look hideous. And uh, so these troublemakers did that to the uh, Westbrook's home. The Westbrook's were on an errand of mercy. While they were still gone, other neighbors, this is beautiful, other neighbors like perhaps people right here, saw the Westbrook house being vandalized. And so they got together and they repainted the house, totally repainted the house. So it looked like brand new. When the Westbrooks came back, they saw their house freshly painted. And they never realized that it had been vandalized. That's because God was working in people in that neighborhood, in that community, in that church, to do the right thing when other people were doing the wrong thing. Blessings for them. Remember that God has his agenda and is not to destroy, but to repair and to replenish. And that's what happened for the Westbrooks there in Sacramento, California. The third truth is that God is here for our redemption. He wants to rescue us. Think of God as one who rescues, and he is. The uh, story is told of a Boy Scout leader who had uh, a group of people, about 200 people, about the size of this congregation, gathered together to hear some stuff in a Boy Scout camp setting. And as they were there sitting there, the, uh, they had an oration by some young scout, probably about uh, 12 years of age. And he was to give a speech that he'd memorized. He'd worked on that for days or for weeks. So he got up to give his speech. And he, he began with knowing the first couple lines, but then he began to falter. 
And when he faltered, the scoutmaster, knowing the speech himself, uh, filled in, began to prompt the scout boy to uh, carry on. So after a little prodding and hitting from the scoutmaster, the scout, the little scout began to pick up his pace and began to continue his speech. And then every time he couldn't remember the next word, the scoutmaster would whisper out the next word. And so this went on until the speech was finished. When the speech was finished, the parents kind of felt, gee, little Johnny, he, he kept fumbling, he kept pausing. He wasn't sure what he was doing, I guess. And uh, the scoutmaster said more than little Johnny did. And the people applauded like this, kind of trying to be polite. But the scoutmaster stood up and said this. He said, you know, I've never seen a better illustration of a strong, loyal, faithful Boy Scout than Johnny. Every time he faltered, every time he, he wasn't sure, every time he, he stopped, he didn't duck away, he didn't leave the stage. He stood there until we could together finish the thing he'd written. And he did a wonderful job. At that point, everybody applauded little Johnny because he was willing to stay there when things were getting tough. He was willing to stay there when it was hard for him to do it. That's the kind of the thing that God is working with you and me to do. He knows life is not easy. He knows we're gonna have challenges. He knows we're gonna have difficulties. He knows we may even have some failures, but he wants us to stick with him. And remember, we're never alone. God is always with us. Remember that there are difficulties in life, but we can surmount them because we're not alone, because God is working out his agenda in us, through us, and through others in our, in our fellowship. And remember always that God is at the work of making you a great person, not you're making him a great God. God making you a great person. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you that you desire not that your will be done, though you do desire that, but that rather we will help you accomplish what you want, that we will help you accomplish your will. So Father, guide us today and in the days to come that we may do the will of you who sent us, who created us, who blessed us now and for always through Jesus Christ your Son, our Savior. Amen and amen.